Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy, and this is Introduction to Idea. And in today's lesson, we'll be discussing exploring the data. And if you haven't seen the previous six videos, I recommend that you check those out before you watch this one. So here we have the customer database open, and we're going to be focusing on this explore area. First thing we're going to do is gap detection. So gap detection is really useful in scenarios such as identifying gaps in check numbers, invoice IDs, payment IDs, and really help to check whether or not you have complete data. So here we're going to have customer number. It's going to ask you for your mask. In this case, this is the particular mask. Uh, we're just going to create a result. We're just going to call this customer number gap. And we're not going to run any filters. We're going to press OK. And you're going to see here that there was a gap between 10,001 and 10,002. And as well, various gaps here. So a really quick and easy way uh, to identify where there is missing values. Perfect. So the next one we're going to talk about is Benford's Law. So Benford's Law, I'll include a link in the description uh, where I've done this in version 9 in more detail where I showed the example, explained the theory, but I'm going to assume that you would already know Benford's Law, but you can check out the card caption that's going to show up on the screen now. So here, Benford's Law, we're going to take credit limit and we're going to include all positive values or include all negative values, doesn't really matter. Uh, or don't, it does matter, but in most cases you include positive values. Uh, show boundaries, uh, mean absolute deviation, that sounds good. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll just call the table Benford's Law. It's going to do Benford's Law based on the first digits, first two digits, first three digits, including suspicious. And then as well, the last, we're not going to do the last digits uh, or the second digit or the summation. We're just going to include on these, uh, actually just, just do on the first one. Uh, so here it's going to show the result which shows you this nice graph, which show you that, uh, for example, the red is expected distribution, the purple is the upper bound of the distribution based off of our standard deviation or a z-score, and then here is the, the lower bound. And you can see here that really none of them comply. Well, four complies, but you'll see one is under the lower bound, uh, two is above, just above, three is above, four is in the bound, five is above, six is above, seven is below, eight is above, uh, nine is below. So maybe not the best example, but that just gives you an idea of how Benford Law uh, can be performed in IDEA. And I'll include a link in the description on how I perform that in a more detailed uh, manner. Next one I'm gonna cover is gonna be duplicate, duplicate keys. I'm not gonna cover fuzzy keys just because I think it's a little bit more complicated and I'll cover that in a separate video. Uh, but there's two ways you can approach it, either detection or in exclusion. Most times you're going to do detection, so where you're actually going to export the duplicates. And it's going to ask you what your keys are. So in this case, I want same first name, same last name, and country as an example. And then I'm just going to call, we'll just call it credit. And then you can either output the duplicate records or output records without duplicates. So press that. And you'll see here there were there were none kicking out. Maybe I'll redo it with a potential duplication. So, uh, for example, maybe I'll do same last name, same country. And then you'll see here these ones have the same country and last name as a way of potentially catching duplicates. And this is a really useful technique if you want to catch, for example, duplicate invoices, duplicate journal entries, or a number of different factors. So I'm going to leave it there, but if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.